Hello, it's Heather, and I'm back with a new video. This week I'm going to be talking about Lady and the Tramp, which is Disney's 15th full-length animated feature, and this came out in 1955. And I just want to start with the quote that's in the Disney Plus I think it's also in the back of the DVD. It reads, This heartwarming tale now charms a new generation of families and fans with its exquisite animation, unforgettable songs, and one of the greatest love stories of all time. Contains tobacco depictions. This program is presented as originally created. It may contain outdated cultural depictions. And I just want to start by saying, first of all, Bella Note means beautiful night. And in the credits, they're literally singing, it's a beautiful night on this beautiful night. <laughs> so if one of the first scenes is, is um, it's during Christmas. I guess this movie basically takes place over the entirety of a year. Um, and there's a puppy in the box and no holes, which is sad. Um, why did they not have holes? I know this is based on a story from Walt Disney's past, but jeez. It's like, don't put a puppy in a box, in, in a hat box. Don't do this. <laughs> um, as someone who has had puppies her all throughout her life growing up, I know that Lady will not use that piece of paper. Jim Deere puts down one sheet of newspaper <laughs> in the entire room. Um, basically, she'll go everywhere but that one piece of paper. That's, that's how it's going to work. The whole scene with Lady as a puppy and Jim trying to get her to use her own bed. This is the most realism I've ever seen in a Disney movie, if not any movie. I especially love that he says, it's just for tonight, but of course, as an adult, she's still sleeping on the bed. As a dog owner, this is 100% fact. Um, then you meet some of the characters. Um, I love Trusty and Jock. Jock has this line about his grandfather, Old Reliable, always having this saying. Then the other characters tell him he's already told them about Old Reliable. Um, Jock is always is super adorable. He's a little Scottish Terrier. He's got his horde of bones in his yard. It almost seems like they're going to come up again later in the film, but the way they're framed, um, but they never do. <laughs> so I guess it's just a cute thing. There's a line in the film about how no one knows what the sex of the baby is before it's born. Uh, when did we actually get the technology to be able to tell the sex of babies? So, this film came out in 1955, and it looks like as though we started ultrasounds about a year or so after this. I think this film takes place in the early 1900s, but it's kind of debatable. The concept art made it a little more clear that it was probably the Edwardian era, but this may be a little after that. The baby bottles look like science speakers. I looked up some information about baby bottles at this time, and I never saw that shape come up in any of the images. From the early 1900s on, it seems like we've been using the upright shape we mostly use today. Rubber was used at that point though. Um, also, I think they forgot to animate the baby. <laughs> the baby's just like lying there, not moving. <laughs> Are you okay, baby? Um, so the scene with the Siamese cats. <laughs> I think, it doesn't even mention it in the film, but I think their names are like Cy and Am or something like that. <laughs> Who names a cat Am? <laughs> um, this is the only scene I actually do have a recollection of as a kid. I remember watching this film on VHS when I was a kid, but this is like really the only scene I remember. But I think in the very earlier days of living in Vermont, my aunt was singing in the Cy she was singing the Siamese cat song in the living room or something. And I know it's totally out of date at this point. That whole scene but it's still kind of a funny scene in my memories so later on the scene that launched a thousand references are we supposed to assume that the italian guys are a racial stereotype they just remind me of mario and luigi but i guess they're kind of racial stereotypes too are people from italy a race is it racial stereotyping or is it national stereotyping uh, i digress <laughs> lady and the tramp go off cavorting together like in actuality <laughs> in the making of this film uh, in interviews, they explained that this is the furthest they could push this without getting in trouble. It's pretty obvious once you think about it, because the two dogs are off traipsing around town, and then the next scene it's morning, and they're waking up next to each other. Hmm, very sly Disney. It especially makes sense when you think about the amount of time that goes by. Jim and Darling's baby was born in April, then maybe several months go by, and it's the summer, the leaves haven't turned yet, Lady and Tramp go off together, then the last scene we see is on Christmas Day, or Eve, maybe, I don't know. Um, their puppies look about six to eight weeks old, about the time puppies are running around and almost ready to leave. This means that they were likely born about the end of October, which means Lady would have gotten pregnant about the end of August. Hmm. 
The scene with the dogs in the kennel, it's sad, but it's also kind of clever. There are shadows of bars on the dogs, but it makes it look like they're wearing stripes, like they're in prison. All the dogs have accents based on where the breed originates. So why doesn't the dachshund have a German accent? Um, th then there's a rat. <laughs> um, this rat is like bigger than my dog. Um, it's kind of horrifying, but then it's hilarious when it makes squeaky toy noises. <laughs> Um, don't know if that was intentional. I can't believe this movie made me think that Trusty died and then they just cut to cute puppies like nothing happened. Of course he's okay, it's Disney. I did find out while watching the making of that they did actually plan on offing him, but it would have, it would have been kind of bold. Um, I think kids would have been able to handle it though. Trusty mentions Old Reliable one more time and can't even remember what he even said. <laughs> oh, Trusty. <laughs> As for the extras, after the movie, there's some deleted scenes. The first one's about the baby arriving in the house, kind of generic and blah. I don't think it was, I don't really think too much about it. Um, another one of the deleted scenes is named Dog Show. I can only summarize this by saying it's complete chaos. It doesn't make any sense in the context of the rest of the film. The film treats a lot of the dogs like they're, uh, uh, they are other people. Lady and the Tramp, as a movie, is pretty well established so the dogs act like dogs. Even though they can talk to each other, they can't talk to the people. They only do dog-like things and every everything's pretty realistic in that context. The short has some of the dogs acting like people running the show. There are also human showrunners. It's one of the most confusing things I've ever seen. Honestly, I'm really glad they cut it out. The same can definitely be said about another short. It's another cutscene called Introduction of Boris. It's so weird and completely devoid from the rest of the film. The scene is, was from the original script of the movie where Lady had two dog suitors vying for her affection. Boris eventually became this dog that was in the kennel when Lady got sent to the pound. He was a short one-off character and doesn't attribute much. The next short, Lady Sweater, shows Lady as a much tougher, mo more outgoing character. She's more prone to getting in fights and standing up for herself. She definitely changed in that time when they added Tramp to the script. So there's one more short in the Disney Plus app, and this is called Walt and His Dogs. Unsurprisingly, I really like this one. I guess you can say what you will about Walt Disney, but at the very least, he was a huge dog lover. I feel like this came across especially in this film. As someone who grew up with dogs her entire life and has never not had a dog, I know very well how they behave and how they work. You know their personalities, how they differ from each other, they become part of your life. And this be it came across very clearly when watching this short little documentary-like featurette. Walt said that after he, they had a few dogs and they got older and they passed away, he didn't want to pick up the next dog. He wanted his family to pick one out because then they would like the dog, but he'll like the dog no matter what because it's a dog. <laughs> and I like that line a lot. So, <laughs> All in all, this probably had to be one of my favorite movies from this era. I like Cinderella a lot and Peter Pan, but this movie made me feel a little bit more about the characters. I don't know it's, if it's because they're dogs and I really like dogs, but I mean, I even, I even like the people. Jim Deere and Darling are pretty awesome owners and parents. I really enjoyed this movie. It was super fun and I enjoy it more probably now than when I was growing up. I know it's been like a little bit in between videos and stuff and I've been kind of like just bogged down with life and just everything in general. Um, trying to start new projects slash work on other projects, <laughs> work on multiple things going on. Um, everyone that's supporting me, I'm like super grateful for. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, you know, helping me do what I want to do. Uh, you know, just please, whatever you can get like the word out there. I'd love to be able to at least go down to like part time of my job so I could, can do this more often and I don't have to. <laughs> like stick around and like work 40 hours a week at my regular job so you know it does get kind of tough. I appreciate you guys being supportive and being so patient with me and it's been amazing you know I enjoyed doing these videos a lot they do they are time consuming so I'm not able to do them as much as possible I know I've been kind of going down to like every few weeks and uh, just whenever I can really at this point. So, um, it, it, they are happening still and I still want to keep making them because they're enjoyable and I enjoy drawing like all the characters and everything. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, share, subscribe if you can. Um, it would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everyone. Thank you to my patrons, Aaron Lindo, Ben Wright Human, Brandon Tinch, Colin Warmbrot, Darkly Master, Hexapus Inc., J. 
Jack Mahan Tenney, Jesse Durona, Merrick Bennett, Story Comic, and a very special thank you to my $10 patrons, Corbin Kolbalt, Jared Gorlay, and Steve Zarzinski. 